In 2039, the oxygen levels on Earth are so low that it's become uninhabitable. There aren't any plants left, cities have become wastelands, and only a few people are left around the world, who survive using masks connected to oxygen tanks. In Brooklyn, engineer Darius has left the family bunker to clean the solar panels while his father goes into the bookstore to get new stuff to read for his granddaughter. On the way out, the father steps on rotten wood and falls through the floor, which leaves him hanging off the reception ceiling. The fall damages his oxygen pack and he starts having trouble breathing. Darius hears the issue over the comms and runs to the bookstore, where he tries to release his father from the hole to no avail. He goes upstairs to grab him by his feet instead and it works, but it's too late, the man is dead. Afterward Darius returns to the bunker, where he gives the bad news to his wife Maya and their daughter Zora. Thanks to Darius' engineering knowledge and Maya's farmer experience, the bunker has enough oxygen and plants to keep a decently comfortable life. Darius announces he wants to bury his father next to his mother, who is in a cemetery more than five miles away. Zora protests because of the potential danger, but Darius points out they haven't seen anyone in three years so he should be fine. In the evening after the others fall asleep, Darius runs some maintenance on the machine that keeps the bunker running and discovers the oxygen reserve will only last two months. The computer even says that the system has been compromised, so Darius has a hard choice to make. The next morning, Darius says goodbye to Zora and gives her the book her grandfather got her. Then Zora watches Darius leave with the body on the security camera. Not wanting to lose contact with him, Zora uses the radio to try to reach him, sharing random stories like the fact he predicted the oxygen shortage and nobody believed him, but at least he got to build the bunker in time. Unfortunately Darius never answers, and five months pass without any news from him. Maya and Zora try their best to survive on their own. Now it's their duty to leave the bunker and keep up with the device's maintenance. They always make sure to bring a gun when they go out, but Maya still gets angry whenever Maya wanders away on her own just to get close. Luckily the bunker has a very thick steel door and a password lock, so they should be safe for the time being. They keep each other company as much as they can but in quiet moments Darius' missing presence is very obvious. Zora never gives up and continues to send messages through the radio talking about family memories from before the apocalypse. Maya doesn't give up either and often goes outside to plant seeds, hoping one day one will actually grow. She also runs fake errors on the computer to teach Zora how to fix any issues they may come across. Sometimes Zora says she'll go out to look for her father, but Maya reminds her she's already tried and forbids Zora from leaving. This often ends up in the same arguments. One afternoon, the duo is outside after finishing maintenance when suddenly they see two people approaching with a shopping cart. They run to hide behind an old car and watch how the strangers try to enter the bunker. They're unsuccessful, but it's weird that they knew exactly what door to go to. At that moment, Maya and Zora's system reminds them of their oxygen levels and one of the strangers called Tess hears the noise, so she comes looking for them with her weapon out while her partner Lucas climbs to the roof to search for other entrances. Tess carefully approaches the car but doesn't find the women. At that moment she hears Lucas trying to warn her of something on the radio, but it's too late, Maya and Zora tackle her to the ground, then they run to the bunker to get inside and close the door before the strangers can follow them. Then Maya gets on the comms and demands an explanation. Tess swears they mean no harm and that she and Lucas live in a bomb shelter outside Philadelphia with 25 other people. Their air filtration system recently started failing, so they traveled for three days to find Darius. Tess claims to be a physicist who worked with him at the university and she only wants to take a look at the system he created to copy it. She even knows Maya's and Zora's names, but Maya still doesn't trust her because Darius never mentioned her. Suddenly Zora mutes the mic and starts fighting with Maya over how to proceed. Zora doesn't want the people at the shelter to die, but Maya doesn't think the shelter exists at all. After lots of arguing, Zora convinces her mom to help because if Tess truly can copy Darius' technology, they could bring big changes to the world. Maya tells Tess and Lucas to leave their weapons by the door and wait on their knees. She comes out with her gun out and asks Tess to tie up Lucas' hands, then she ties Tess' hands as well. Next Maya checks they aren't hiding any other weapons before guiding Tess toward the shelter. When they're about to enter, Micah comes out of hiding and tells them to stop, so Maya opens fire at the same time that Zora comes out and shoots as well. Micah is wounded but he still runs and tackles Zora into the bunker, so Maya runs inside too and closes the door, leaving Tess and Lucas outside. Mother and daughter point their weapons at Micah and as soon as they enter the main room, they tie him up. Afterward Maya uses the comms to talk to Tess, who explains this is just a misunderstanding. Micah is her lookout, so when he saw her tied up and being taken away he thought she was in danger. Maya doesn't believe anything she says and tells her to leave, so Tess announces she'll get Darius' machine no matter what it takes. With a knife, Tess releases herself and Lucas, then she announces they're using the drill. Inside, Maya and Zora take care of Micah's wound while still arguing if his story is real or not. Suddenly the alarm goes off and the computer announces the system was compromised. Zora and Micah try to look at the camera, but Tess has covered it with tape. She's also retrieving the weapon Micah dropped while Lucas is using a drill to try to bring down the bunker door. 
Luckily Zora gets an idea and she grabs a few mechanical pieces to put together a little contraption that she then puts against the door. By activating it, she sends an electromagnetic pulse and breaks the drill. Refusing to give up, Tess climbs to the roof and injects carbon dioxide into the bunker, bringing the oxygen levels severely down. As the alarm goes off, Zora and Maya rush to put on their masks. Maya leaves to take care of the problem and Zora stays to keep Micah at gunpoint, but she feels uncomfortable when he starts talking about his young daughter. After lots of hesitation, she decides to share a mask with him as long as he answers her questions. Micah swears they didn't kill Darius and that Tess truly knew him before the apocalypse. Outside, Lucas is supposed to wait by the door to attack, but he gets distracted when he sees something in the garage. He drags Tess there, but before they can enter, the emergency lock kicks in. At that moment, Maya gets on the roof and opens fire, forcing them to hide. In a few seconds, the duo comes up with a plan, so Tess starts firing back at Maya while Lucas runs toward the bunker. Inside, the air becomes clear again and they can drop the masks, so Micah uses the chance to start fighting against the rope. Tess suddenly comes out of hiding, pretending to surrender. However this is a distraction so Lucas can jump on Maya from behind, starting a fight that breaks Maya's leg. In return, she hits him with a mop and hurts his ear. Unfortunately Tess surprises her from behind and knocks her out. At the same time, Micah frees himself and attacks Zora, who pushes him off by pressing her thumb against Micah's wound. However Micah finds her weapon and holds her at gunpoint. Minutes later, Lucas and Tess uncover the camera while holding Maya hostage. Micah ties Zora up and tries to open the door, but he can't without the code. Suddenly he starts feeling dizzy because of all the blood he lost and falls dead on the spot. Outside, Lucas threatens to shoot Maya if Zora doesn't open the door, but the microphone is still muted and Zora can't explain herself. Thankfully Micah's radio is nearby so she drags it over with her feet and tells the group that she's tied up and Micah is dead. Tess demands Maya to open the door from this side, but she reveals a special badge is needed together with the code and that badge is inside to prevent people from entering. Desperate to help her daughter, Maya eventually admits there's another badge but it's far from there. She has a working car, so Tess agrees to leave with her while Lucas stays to keep watch. During the ride, Maya explains they're going to find Darius. It turns out that after he left to bury his dad, Maya found a note in which he explained the machine couldn't keep the air clean for three people anymore, but with only two there would be more time for Zora and Maya to figure out the seeds. This means Darius truly is dead and he didn't return on purpose. Back in the bunker, Zora tells the computer to play some music, which Lucas appreciates. A few hours later, Maya finds Darius' body and takes a moment to grieve before finding the badge. The duo is ready to go, but at that moment the car runs out of power. Tess asks for the badge as she points out Maya can barely move with her broken leg, so there's no way she'll survive a trip back on foot. She confesses she also used to have a daughter and promises to take good care of Zora, so Maya agrees to give her the badge and the code. Before leaving, Tess promises to come back for Maya when she has more oxygen in her tank. Then Tess starts running back and eventually finds a bicycle in the middle of the city, so she uses it to reach the bunker safely. With the code and the badge, she and Lucas get inside right before they run out of air. Zora demands to know where Maya is, so Tess tells her everything, including Darius' sacrifice. Tess wants to go back with a new mask and get Maya, but Lucas threatens to kill Tess if she doesn't start working on the machine. With a drill, Tess opens a panel in Darius' invention and finds a very advanced system, so she has no choice but to admit she doesn't understand enough to recreate it. Lucas starts losing his mind, causing Tess to finally admit she lied, she never met Darius before, she only learned about him and his family because her radio picked up Zora's messages. She knows enough about technology to help back in the shelter, but she hadn't expected the machine to be this level of complicated. Furious, Lucas shoots her on the spot. As Zora has a breakdown, Lucas sits next to her and points out that she knows enough about the machine and the bunker, so he wants her to teach him how to use it yet refuses to untie her. Back to Maya, she sits in the car while thinking about her family. She notices she only has 21% of oxygen left, concluding nobody will come for her before it runs out. At that moment she's shocked to see something on the ground, it's a little plant starting to grow out. She removes her mask for a second and confirms the air is getting cleaner, which gives her hope. Inspired to keep on surviving, Maya tries to recharge the car's solar battery. At the bunker, Lucas throws Tess and Micah's bodies out to get rid of the smell. Then he grabs a can of food, but Zora refuses to tell him where the opener is so he smashes the can to open it. Zora calls him out for staying here instead of going back to help his shelter, but he doesn't care. Suddenly the alarm goes off announcing a problem with the cables. Lucas agrees to untie Zora so she can take care of it, but only gives her enough oxygen for a few minutes so she can't run away. Zora gets to the roof and puts the cables back together, only to discover it was Maya who messed with them. After a warm reunion, Zora tries to get back inside, but Lucas won't open the door because he wants to see her suffer. The duo then makes a plan. Seconds later, the alarm goes off again, so Lucas comes out and sees Zora unconscious on the ground. He throws dirt at her and starts praying, only to suddenly be shot by Maya, 
which damages his oxygen tanks as well. When he tries to move, Zora reveals to be awake and makes him trip. Then Maya and Zora run back into the bunker, but Lucas manages to stand up and follows them. He passes through the first door and tackles them to get through the second one as well, causing the bad air to get into the shelter. As the alarm goes off, Lucas demands oxygen while threatening the women with his weapon, however Zora points out that if he shoots he'll cause an explosion. He lets them move to fix it, but instead Zora and Maya go outside and close the doors, leaving Lucas in a broken room. Not wanting to die slowly, Lucas shoots his weapon and the resulting explosion kills him. Outside, Maya and Zora survive thanks to the masks and escape in the car, however they don't have much oxygen left. Remembering Micah's story, Zora drives them through the city and tries to find the shelter, but they find the doors closed and they pass out on the stairs. Moments later, Maya is shocked to wake up clean and rested. The people from the shelter heard them and rescued them, and now Zora is sharing Darius' machine with them. With the survivors' help, mother and daughter work together to start planting the new seeds and bring back vegetation to the world. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.